and they interviewed Cliff Kingsbury, according to Mike Garofolo of NFL Media. That hit last night. Cliff Kingsbury, the former Cardinals coach, now a special advisor at USC, interviewed for the Chicago Bears offensive coordinator job. Got a lot of people thinking, oh, they're taking Caleb Williams if they're bringing in Cliff Kingsbury. Worked with Caleb Williams last year. They didn't hire Cliff Kingsbury. The Eagles could. Kingsbury's available. And, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence right now as to how attractive that is because of how dysfunctional it was at the end of the season. But if you wipe away the dysfunction, it becomes a very attractive position, and clearly it was attractive enough to Cliff Kingsbury to interview for it. Yeah, I, I, I agreed. I, you know, I, I, again, I think as a coach, there's a lot of things there that you look at you know, that are on the field at least. Like you said, you're going to want some of the answers about what went on, what really, what, what's the – you know, structure of the organization, what added to the dysfunction this year. I hear those are legitimate questions, but I think most coaches from, you know, X's and O's, talent on the field, they're going to go, wow, you know, I'd like to go there and work with that group. I think it's going to position me, hey, Cliff Kingsbury, I can go there and have a top five offense, and then everybody's going to go, hey, I think he's a head coach in the NFL material type again. Right. So that's where I think a guy like Cliff Kingsbury jumps into that conversation right away because he recognizes that and goes, wait, this would be a great way to re restart, jumpstart my career again to get me back to head coachville and making that big time money once again. Yeah, uh, you're right. You're right. And uh, strange as it would sound for Cliff Kingsbury, who was sub 500 in the NFL, sub 500. Well, that's, Texas I question Tech that coach again. I question all of that. Like that's fair right. to question too. Like right. what did he, how, what did he do to deserve to be now the offensive coordinator of the most talented offense in football? Right. Well, I mean, we, we weren't sitting here whack, like waxing poetically about the Cliff Kingsbury offense when he was at Arizona, we were going, damn, the whole league's caught on to it. There's not a lot there. What are they going to do? So, you know, again, what I would say to Philadelphia is, didn't you kind of just do the college experience? And we're going to go back to the college experience again? Oh, just spread the field. Spread the field. We have like four plays, but so what? Spread the field. We'll put our athletes in space. Yeah, that shit works in college. It, when, you're, when you're the coach of Oklahoma or somebody like that, where your players are way better than everybody else, it don't work in the NFL. We just saw it. The team with the most talent ran the, we're going to spread the field and basically run five plays. And they got their ass whooped at the end of the year. So that's where I would go to Philadelphia. You sure you want to go down that road? That, that was what I would question. A viewer has suggested as offensive coordinator of the Eagles, a yeah. guy who has been offensive coordinator of the Eagles in the past, Frank Reich. Better I, known as Frank Reich. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> I, I like, hey, but, but if Frank was, would be willing to take that job and deal with that or whatever, but yeah, I'm, I'm a believer in Frank's offense, right? I mean, of course, Sirianni learned a lot of what he learned from Frank Reich, you know, and hey, Sirianni's got to start getting involved in the offense more, you know, you know, you know, I'm a believer in that. Hey, I became the head coach because I was good at coaching offense. And then I get to the head coach and go, eh, I don't want to do what I was so good at and got here. I'd rather just manage the whole team. And I, I just don't always look at that as a recipe for success as well. It's odd that you see that happen because usually the coach who has the offensive or defensive background, yeah. whatever it may be, remains heavily involved right. in the thing that got him there. He still finds a way to put the time in because that's what's responsible for his ability to become a head coach in the first place. And there's a certain amount of, it's not really ego. I don't know what it is. It's just like, look, I know what I'm doing here. I know what I'm doing, and I'm yeah, going to be involved. exactly. That's just right. the way it is. This right. is what I do. This is my specialty. I can do both. I can be involved, and we see it. Whether you call the plays or not, you're still involved in it. And that's what hurt Sirianni this year with Shane Steichen leaving to be the head coach of the Colts. It exposed Sirianni to a certain extent. Yeah. Sirianni and Brian Johnson without Shane Steichen was a far less than – offense than it was the year before and that's part of why I think Sirianni has had that feeling that we've noticed where he's just kind of on the ropes and hostage video press conferences right. and it creates a sense that he has no confidence so we have no confidence and no one has confidence and that's why the surprise that there wasn't even much of a conversation about moving on to a new coach I think I think that's why we all were kind of like, oh, really? After all that, we know he, we know three years of the playoffs. We know, we know, we know. But man, something he, it's like he's lost it and he can't get it back. And maybe he'll get it back, maybe with the right offensive coordinator. So we'll continue to track who they interview 
and who ultimately becomes the coordinator and what Jalen Hurts thinks about it if we even get the chance to find out. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.